What if I told you America's newest supercarrier isn't just the biggest ship afloat, but a make or break gamble on whether aircraft carriers can survive hypersonic missiles, AI drone swarms, and space age surveillance? Meet the USS John F. Kennedy, CVN 79, the second ship of the Ford class, born for a world where threats move faster than admirals can blink. Click confirmation. This isn't a museum piece. Kennedy packs twin A1B nuclear reactors and an all-electric flight deck, emails catapults to throw jets and drones off the deck smoother and harder than steam ever could, and AAG arresting gear to catch even light UAVs without tearing them apart. Translation, more sorties, less strain, and a launch recovery system built for the next era of naval aviation. Expectation lift. And it isn't just the deck gear. Kennedy trades the older dual-band radar concept for the Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar, EASR, a cheaper, scalable sensor suite that saved hundreds of millions while keeping performance sharp across the fleet. That efficiency matters when you're building a ship to fight for 50 years. Here's what you'll know by the end of this video. The hidden power math that makes EMALS, AAG, and eventually directed energy defenses possible on a single ship, whether carriers can actually outthink hypersonic carrier killers, and why lasers plus sensor fusion might be the ace up their sleeve. The real timeline, why CVN 79's first years in the fleet, will decide if the carrier era evolves or ends. Buckle up, because if Kennedy delivers on the promise etched into her hull, she won't just launch aircraft. She'll launch a new logic of sea power. For over a century, aircraft carriers have been the floating symbols of global power projection. In World War II, they decided entire battles. Midway wasn't won by battleships, but by carriers flinging squadrons of aircraft across the Pacific. Since then, every major conflict has followed the same pattern. When crisis breaks out, the first question is always, where's the nearest American carrier? That's how much these giants mattered. But here's the dilemma. Carriers were built for a world where enemies needed weeks to mobilize, where planes could fly undisturbed over vast oceans, and where the biggest threat was another carrier strike group. That world is gone. Today, hypersonic missiles like China's DF-21D scream toward targets at more than Mach 10, changing course mid-flight, specifically designed to sink carriers before they get within striking range. Drones, once toys, now operate in swarms, stealthy, expendable, and coordinated by AI. Add orbital surveillance systems, and a carrier's position is almost impossible to hide for long. Imagine this, a $13 billion floating city, crewed by thousands, tracked in real time by satellites, targeted by missiles that travel a mile per second. For some defense analysts, carriers are not symbols of dominance anymore. They're symbols of vulnerability. And that's where the question begins to haunt US strategy. Are carriers obsolete, or can technology save them from extinction? They could have walked away. By the late 2000s, critics were already whispering, carriers are dinosaurs, too expensive, too vulnerable. But instead of retreating, the US Navy doubled down, betting that a new class of carrier could rewrite the rules of survival at sea. Enter the Ford class, and with it, the USS John F. Kennedy. CVN-79. Construction began in 2011, and what followed wasn't just a shipbuilding project, it was a gamble that stretched the limits of naval engineering. At a projected cost of over $11 billion, Kennedy was designed not to mimic the past, but to leap into a future where naval warfare would be faster, stealthier, and more data-driven than ever before. Here's what makes that leap so bold. Kennedy wasn't just a slightly improved version of the Nimitz carriers, it was an entirely new architecture. From its nuclear heart to its electromagnetic flight deck, the ship was envisioned as the first true digital era carrier, built to plug into a world of AI pilots, drone swarms, and directed energy weapons. But the price wasn't just measured in billions. Every innovation introduced new risks, delays in construction, untested systems, skeptical lawmakers, for every admiral calling Kennedy the future, there was a critic warning it could be a floating money pit. And yet, the Navy pressed forward, because the alternative was worse. To do nothing would mean conceding the oceans to rising powers. With Kennedy, America wasn't just building a ship. It was making a statement. The carrier era isn't over. Not yet. 
The question now is, can Kennedy's radical new tech actually deliver on that promise? Here's where the magic, or the gamble, really begins. On the surface, USS John F. Kennedy looks like just another behemoth of steel and deck. But beneath that flight deck lies an engineering revolution designed to answer every critic who ever called carriers obsolete. A nuclear heart built for the future. At the core are two A1B nuclear reactors, monsters capable of producing 700 megawatts of thermal power, about 25% more than the Nimitz class. That's not just fuel for propulsion, it's the electrical muscle to power everything from electromagnetic catapults to future combat lasers. Think of it as wiring a battleship like a city, with enough power to keep Manhattan's lights on. The EMALS revolution. Say goodbye to steam catapults. Kennedy uses EMALS, electromagnetic aircraft launch systems, linear motors that hurl jets and drones into the sky with precision. Unlike steam, EMALS doesn't slam the airframe with brutal stress. It's smoother, faster, lighter, and frees up precious space below deck. It even boosts launch rates by 25% per day. For drones especially, it's a game changer. No more wrecked airframes just trying to take off. Catching the future, AAG arresting gear. Landing isn't any less radical. Kennedy's advanced arresting gear, AAG, replaces heavy hydraulic systems with electromagnetic braking. Why? Because the Navy knows drones and stealth UAVs are the future, and hydraulics simply tore them apart. AAG allows Featherlight, UAVs, and Heavy Strike fighters to land safely on the same deck. No compromises. Radar Rewired, the EASR advantage. Older carriers carried the futuristic but costly dual-band radar. Kennedy instead opts for the Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar, EASR. Simpler, scalable, and hundreds of millions cheaper. In plain English, it gives Kennedy the eyes of the future, while cutting the price tag and making training easier across the entire Navy. Weapons at warp speed. Even the elevators that haul bombs are electric marvels. 11 electromagnetic weapon elevators moving at up to 150 feet per minute, each carrying 24,000 pounds. Translation, aircraft are rearmed in minutes, not hours. That means Kennedy can surge to 270 sorties a day compared to the Nimitz's 180. All of this feeds into one bigger truth. Kennedy isn't just a floating airfield. It's a digital war machine, wired from keel to mast to fight in the age of drones, AI, and lasers. But here's the catch. Shiny systems don't win wars by themselves. The real question is, can they stand up to the storm of missiles, politics, and budgets that will define Kennedy's future? But here's the uncomfortable truth. Every revolution carries a price. And Kennedy's price tag is as staggering as its ambition, a billion dollar burden. With a sticker cost north of $11 billion, plus billions more in research and development, the USS John F. Kennedy is one of the most expensive warships ever built. Critics in Congress ask the same haunting question. What if a single hypersonic missile wipes out a decade of investment in under 10 minutes? For taxpayers, that's a nightmare scenario. A floating fortress sunk before it even gets to fight. Delays and doubts. Construction began in 2011. The Navy hoped for a swift turnaround, but as with many first-of-its-kind systems, delays piled up. Testing emails, AAG, and other new tech took longer than predicted. Headlines screamed, cost overruns, and delayed launch dates. For every admiral boasting about innovation, there was a senator waving budget spreadsheets demanding answers. The hypersonic shadow. Then there's the enemy's answer, China's DF-21D and DF-26 carrier killer missiles. Long-range, hypersonic, maneuverable warheads designed for one mission, sinking carriers. Russia boasts similar systems. Can even the most advanced radar and laser defense keep up with a weapon that dives from the edge of space at Mach 10? The Navy insists yes, but skeptics aren't convinced. Politics of power. Beyond missiles, Kennedy sails through political storms as well. Budget battles rage in Washington, allies question whether carriers are still worth the cost, and rivals portray them as relics of the 20th century. Each congressional hearing is a battle to prove that this giant isn't already obsolete. And yet, for all the criticism, Kennedy isn't just a ship, it's a statement of intent. The U.S. is telling the world, we will not abandon the seas. Still, the biggest question remains. When the day of reckoning comes, will Kennedy be a sitting duck 
or the Stormbreaker that proves carriers still matter. Fast forward to the year 2035. Tensions in the Pacific have boiled over. A peer rival floods the seas with stealth drones and locks satellites on every U.S. fleet movement. And there she is, USS John F. Kennedy, 100,000 tons of steel, cutting through contested waters, the eyes of the world fixed on her fate. The first wave. It doesn't start with jets. It starts with shadows. Swarms of autonomous decoy drones pour ahead of Kennedy's strike group. Enemy radars light up, unleashing salvos of hypersonic missiles. To the untrained eye, it looks like the end. A storm of fire streaking down from the upper atmosphere. But that's the plan. The decoys pull enemy missiles into the sky, burning them out before they reach the carrier. The digital wolf pack. Then Kennedy strikes back, not with brute force, but with brains. Her E-M-A-L-S catapults fling F-35s and stealth UAVs skyward in rapid succession. Overhead, a web of sensor fusion and AI battle management kicks in. Kennedy's digital nervous system linking fighters, drones, and satellites into one mind. The carrier itself is no longer just a ship. It's the quarterback of a war network. Seconds decide survival. An enemy hypersonic breaks through, diving at Mach 10. In the old days, that would mean disaster. But Kennedy's reactors surge power to her high-energy lasers. A blinding beam slices across the sky, one missile gone in a flash. At the same moment, AAG arresting gear recovers a returning UAV with vital recon data, its sensors already mapping the next threat. Every second, machines calculate, pilots react, and the line between human and AI command blurs. Victory by milliseconds. The rival commander expected to sink a $13 billion symbol in one strike. Instead, Kennedy and her digital wolf pack survive, adapt, and strike back. Dogfights aren't fought in minutes anymore. They're fought in milliseconds, in data streams, in beams of light. And for this round, the carrier lives. But the vision raises a haunting question. Is this a glimpse of carriers reborn? or the last desperate stand of a dying giant. Names matter. This ship bears the name John F. Kennedy, the president who promised America would go to the moon, not because it was easy, but because it was hard. That choice wasn't an accident. Just as Kennedy's moonshot symbolized a race for technological dominance, the carrier that carries his name represents America's bet that the age of carriers isn't finished yet, a symbol of resolve. For the US, Kennedy is more than a warship. It's a political message, a flag planted on the seas. In an era where rivals insist carriers are relics, the Navy is saying, we're not leaving the oceans, and we're not giving up command of the skies above them. It's a signal to allies that the U.S. still anchors global security, and a warning to adversaries that America is investing not in retreat, but in reinvention. A magnet for allies. Kennedy also strengthens ties. Allies who train on her deck, flying F-35s, Operating drones, practicing with electromagnetic launch systems, gain a glimpse of the future. For NATO partners, Japan and beyond, Kennedy is a floating showcase of the technology they may one day buy into. Her presence reassures friends and unnerves foes. A gamble with history. But legacy is never guaranteed. The Nimitz class proved its worth across decades of conflict. Kennedy has yet to prove herself in a real fight. If she succeeds, she could extend the life of carrier warfare deep into the mid-21st century. If she fails, if hypersonic missiles or swarms of drones prove too much, historians may look back on Kennedy not as the dawn of a new era, but as the last great monument of an old one. So the question lingers. Is CVN-79 the start of a carrier renaissance or the swan song of a giant that refused to go quietly? So, will the USS John F. Kennedy prove that aircraft carriers still rule the seas or confirm the critics who say their era is over? The truth is, Kennedy is both a gamble and a promise, a gamble that billions of taxpayer dollars and decades of innovation can outpace hypersonic missiles AI swarms, and shifting geopolitics. A promise that the carrier era, born in the 20th century, still has fire left in the 21st. What's undeniable is this. Kennedy isn't just a ship. It's a statement. A statement that America will fight for the seas, adapt to new threats, and carry the legacy of naval power into a future defined by machines, lasers, and split-second decisions. But the bigger question isn't about one ship. 
It's about the very concept of the supercarrier. In a world of orbital surveillance, drone swarms, and hypersonic glide vehicles, will floating giants remain the centerpiece of navies or become the last dinosaurs of modern war? If history teaches us anything, it's this. Every time someone declared an era over, the next breakthrough proved them wrong. The Kennedy could be that breakthrough or the last stand. And if you thought this was the end of the story, think again. Because as engineers whisper about seventh generation carriers and autonomous drone flotillas, the race to control the oceans is just beginning. Click the video on screen for a deep dive into how drone swarms and hypersonic weapons are rewriting naval warfare faster than any admiral can react. Or jump to the story of the B-21 Raider, the stealth bomber built to strike from shadows where no carrier can reach. Like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments. Is Kennedy the dawn of a new age? Or the swan song of the carrier era? Let's debate below.